All right, boys, I guess I should have been a little bit more clear in the last video on the Derby when I was talking about the jetting on the carb. And uh, this carb is a 19 millimeter carb, um, a Polini carb. I knew that probably having no air box is gonna be a problem with the stock 50. I just found it strange how I keep from jets all the way from 68 to 100 and it wasn't changing at all. That's what I was saying, what I found super weird to be. Um, it was confusing. I changed the needle. I tried all that. I truly think it's the air box that's the problem. I know these 50cc scooters are really picky on having an air box when there's like a stock carb situation and I assume maybe the 19 millimeter was too big for it um, for the 50cc but I got it in tents um, for when I put a board kit on here um, that I was going to have that carb set up and the pipe and that's why I went that route. So new manifold here that's supposed to be de-restricted. It doesn't look any different but I'm assuming that that one probably has some type of restrictor right here. So gonna go ahead and pull that manifold off check the reeds put this new manifold on too um, while we're in there I took the manifold off and it doesn't look like it was restricted at all anyways but I wanted to get a new one anyways because this one's just so dry rotted and sun cracked like see it all in there so there might have been some I don't think it was bad enough to have an air leak but at least we got another manifold but yeah they don't look any different I thought it for sure it'd have like a restriction on it because this one said de-restricted, but I was kind of assuming that it looked like I already had a de-restricted one. And there was also a couple comments on the exhaust. Yes, this is a de-restricted pipe. I got this used. And then also a lot of people were talking about the Naraku um, barrier kit not being the best and stock being better. If that's the case, I'll probably run the stock and try it. Um, I only got the Naraku because it was the only one that was like in stock that I saw, so I just grabbed it. It's time to get to work on the stroker too because if you saw, when the guides came out all broken. Got some new Polini guides right here so we can throw those on, get the tuning on the stroker. So, this new Manny on, put some Honda Bond on it. The reads look good too. Shout out to the people who comment and like reply to everyone else's questions and stuff on the videos because a lot of people use the comment section to ask questions about their scooters or their problems having and that's sick that there's some people that can actually help out and answer because it's hard for me to answer all the people who DM me all the time asking about their scooter problems, especially like the ones where there's not enough explanation and it's like, hey, I have a Tao Tao scooter and it's just not starting, can you help? And it's really hard to <laughs> narrow down what your problem could be. So. Quickness, got, got the zoom on quick release mode right now. So as you guys saw last time, I uh, put the big stage six manifold on here, back there. Still got the stock carb. I don't even think this is stock carb. I kind of think this is like some cheapy Chinese carb, the more I look at it. And where does this blue oil keep coming from? No, I think it's this carb, because this carb is just a cheapy Chinese carb. But uh, I checked for leaks. There's no leaks in this thing. It's freshly sealed up here, and you can just see it. But this thing does not want to run. I'm about to pull the plug and check the plug right now, but as you can tell, I put a new plug in there already. When I put the air box on, it runs worse. And yes, I'm messing with the AF screw. Um, this is a stock carb, and it looked like stock jetting. I'm gonna have to double check what the stock jetting is supposed to be on this bike. But um, my only bet now is I'm gonna maybe try putting the Pliny in. But like one and a half screws out on the AF. Just double check. I'm gonna drain this tank and probably change the lines and uh, clean up the carb again and put fresh gas in it because I think a little bit of the old gas is still in there and I can just smell how bad it smells that I think that might be part of the problem. And all this blue oil that keeps appearing in the carb makes me think that there's just a bunch of oil in that tank. So, uh, all right boys, it's time to uh, put the new variator guides in. So, as we saw last time, I took my uh, variator out and the guides were literally in pieces, like pieces missing, just fell right out of the actual variator. So, uh, I had to order some new guides. Put some new guides on it. Got some plain new ones. All right, so how you adjust them is you screw this in and it's probably a nut on the inside and it pulls the spring a little bit tighter. So as you can tell by that setting right there, how it works. So I have it on like the midway setting right now. Probably gonna go one more down from mid, maybe about there first, because I don't know if I really want them that tight. All right, so I'll put back together. Everything's on there. The only things I can change now is the jetting, because I was gonna down jet it. 
Um, but uh, also I put in the spacer for the kicker case. I think it's like a TFC spacer, I think it's called or something like that. Spacer's in there and uh, kicker case is back on. I was gonna put the chrome one on, I just started already putting this one on, just completely forgot. But uh, took my skirt off because uh, gonna mess with this carb a little bit. And then uh, I also have a new exhaust gasket because the one that's on here is only like the size, like a 72. And I need the big old stroker 30 mil one. So I got a new exhaust gasket to throw on too. She's got some power off the clutch now for sure. Look at this thing, it's spinning tire. <laughs> Literally spun tire on a little launch right here in the back. I just got done mobbing some wheelies on the purple bike. Chuck's on his way over. We're gonna get to messing with the stroker tuning and probably mess with this derby a little bit more on tuning. I bet Chuck rolls up on the red elite. Hey! <laughs> so you got the 50 mil bore on this one right now. You feeling good though? Or no? No. Like on long holds, like when you're holding it for a while, it, it just needs to be retuned, dude. Yeah. I need new clutch springs. The clutch springs are dead. I have the other ones, the yellow ones that came with it. Dude, it's just super dead. You want to ride it right now? It does the same thing. It's just. <laughs> it takes forever. The hat's super tight from doing runs. Always got the seat loaded to the brim too. Yeah. Always. Look at that. I lost the key. I lost the fucking key. That's what was taking me forever. I was like, what the fuck? The key no way. Yeah. It's because you don't have a Mop Boys keychain on it. No, I got you. <laughs> Delay, especially when you're holding it for a long time. You try to get back on it. What is that? What? Oh, your kickstand. Okay, I forgot about that. <laughs> I don't know, 
Yeah, never did that to me. Huh? Never did that to me. Yeah, I've never heard that ever on Sushi Stories, except for that one time we didn't have my ground hooked up. <laughs> For a second, but it's boggy off the line. Yeah, it's weird, dude. I gotta fix it. I gotta tune it. I haven't spent a lot of time with it. But you know, I want a good core and shit. And the way this thing is set up with the tank being free flow, like right there, it got stuck. I don't think the uh, on and off valve is right. stuck. Because it happened to me before I left. I wasn't feeding gas. Hmm. Oh yeah, I forgot it had the shut off valve. That's what you're talking about. Yeah. See, look, now it's out of gas now. See, that's why it just shut off. This thing's weird. Oh. When you come up to the like turn and then you stop, and it's like when it's like setting. Yeah. Is it usual to down jam when it gets hotter or up jam when it gets hotter? Outside. It's like what's in the air. <laughs> also, I put the air filter on. You think that makes a big difference? Yeah, you're getting less air. You're getting it's more gas. It's so too energy. big of a, too yeah. big of a jet for sure. Yeah, we need to retune it. Chuck is changing the trans on his uh, red bike with now the 50 mil door. No more core cookies. Got the most useful thing right there. Is oh my god! It the snapped fun? the fucking thing, bro! It snapped the adapter. How crazy is that? I've never seen that happen. <laughs> You're just that strong, I guess, or something. Put a little bit of lighter weights in the red bike, and I'm changing uh, the jet out in mine. So, I think we're running a 144 in here, or 142 or something? 142. 142. Maybe like a 138? I don't even know if I have that. I got jet for me. Okay. And then a 142 main with a one, I mean, a 142 main with a 52 pilot. We're gonna try. 50 pilot with a 138 first and then possibly a 135 main. Gonna throw on a new gasket. Is it bigger? Oh, it has bond on it? No, it didn't. It was just barely stuck. Let's see if it's even bigger. Is it for sure? Put it on this and see. For sure, a little bigger. Yep. And this one. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> wow. It's literally glowing orange outside right now. Look at this. Nuts. Tried to swap gaskets and then had an exhaust leak and the big stroker gasket broke. So just put my old gasket back on. Hopefully no leakage. The center of the storm right here, moving. You can literally see it twisting up. That's actually a hole. It looks like it's sticking outwards, but it's going yeah, inwards. The circle is getting really intense for a second. We'll try it out with the new jets, baby.
<laughs> it's still a little boggy off the line. I think it can still go down. Oh my. Bro, it was so hard to keep the front wheel down. I know. That's my five This is with the 5.5 five gears in it too. Super tall gears. It sounds like Mario. It picked up. When it Whoa. went on the first pull I did, it didn't have a bog at all. It was just like, yeah, yeah, and just wheeling the whole street on that. And it's still running cold. Yeah, so yeah. we can it. it's still. That's a 138. It's a 135. Okay. <laughs> That's why you're pulling so hard is because the weights are kind of on the heavier side. Yeah. So they're fucking really, really pulling you. A little bit lighter weights, just a Maybe. little Yay. bit lighter weights. Rolling out on the MV5 because we still gotta uh, adjust the needle. We gotta do some more tuning on the stroker basically. But uh, we're mobbing over to Matt's right now so we don't wanna keep him waiting any longer. But at least we got some more tuning done on that thing. Damn, your boy's hungry. I have not eaten yet today. Make sure these tires are good. Damn it, bro! My front tire! We're tired of making the homies wait on us, so we ditched the stroker for tonight. Hopped on the MB5, pulled out the MB5, which is running prime, and the headlight bolt pops. And that's like a known thing on the MB5s, like that. Now we're on the purple bike. It's grabbing better. Is it? Yeah. Yo! But we're not on the stroker piece. <laughs> the old airbox I had on was super sketchily mounted and had like one or two bolts because a lot of the mounting points are broken, and it was pretty much my, uh, held on by a hose clamp. And uh, this, I got another airbox from the boy Cole and uh, it's a lot tighter fit, way better. Yeah, this thing's definitely got a lot better top end. It doesn't like, it would before like, and I think it was because it was pulling air from the side once it had some good intake on it. Now, it seems like top end wise is just pulling all the way through steady. So. Oh yeah, we're, we're going like 45. I hear it now. Now I hear the carb starving. That Coso spinning, baby. What's that name? <laughs> Been holding the scooter wide open for like miles now. Might just blow the 50, we'll see. <laughs> Let's see how this took off and gets 
juga. <laughs> Mop boys piece, mop boys. I change the needle clip. I'm about to change the needle clip in the carb on the stroker. And once I do that and drop the needle a tiny bit more, I think this bike's gonna be running really prime. So gonna do that real quick and then we'll probably take this thing on a test ride. Right, so. Well boys. The clip was already maxed out in this thing all the way. So uh, so there, there goes the clip idea. I might have to down jet a tiny bit more. I'm gonna change the needle, but it's already maxed out all the way down, which tells me we still need to down jet. Um, Chuck has all the jets. Not gonna be able to down jet it today, but I'll probably link up with him tomorrow or something and we'll go on a ride and down jet it and get this bike running a whole lot better. But the new clutch on this thing and the, and the beginning of tuning that we did on it, tightened up the clutch a tiny bit and man, this thing's a ripper. As you saw, this thing just pulls straight up now. And it definitely had like a dead center spring last time, new center spring, everything got this bike feeling super fresh. Um, can't wait to go on a ride next time. I'll see you guys on the next one.